Um, 48 hours ago when I decided to go live, I did that to speak up to those girls who are fighting in silence and I did that to show that no matter what you face or whatever problems you go to, through, it, it's never your fault. And um, rape should never be the victim's fault and we should hold the predators ac accountable for that. And um, unfortunately for me, I got a different treatment. I was victim blamed and um, I wanted to sh shed light on that and on how our community are so quick to stand behind predators, criminals and thieves and always blaming the woman for it. And so I just hope that my video, well, which it did, um, inspire girls to speak up and not be ashamed about it because it's never your fault and you can never ask for it. So just to confirm, if you're okay with this, that you were raped as a 17 year old? Yes, I was 17 at that time, um, unfortunately. And um, I was under the influence of alcohol, which was my first time drinking it. And I was around two guys that I had trusted that time. These were like a brother to me, I've known them for years. And you know, unfortunately, they didn't see me that way. And things took a huge turn from then on. Do you, uh, do you regret taking to Facebook and um, revealing what happened? At first I did, but then now I'm doing this for a purpose. I'm speaking up uh, and I'm, tr I'm trying to empower the girls and give them the voice that they don't have. It is never okay to just uh, tell somebody that I'll just get over it and tell them to just move on because that affected them real bad and you cannot you can't change the past, but we can help them move forward. And I am really grateful that I shed a light on that because so many people are now seeing what goes behind closed doors. So as of last night, I think there was some 34,000 views on your video. What is it up to today? Oh, right now it's up to 35.9K views and um, a lot of comments. Uh, I, I was not expecting that much views when I decided to go live. I just wanted to let it out and not be ashamed about it because not only did they take advantage of me, but when I tried to escape away from it and I came back, I was still being um, haunted. Not only did they don't feel sorry for what they did, they still go around um, taking it as a threesome and that's not it's not good because it affected me in so many ways and I almost even tried to get rid of my life because of it. And um, it really affected me to find out that people that I even knew were hearing about this and believed that I would actually ask two guys to take advantage of me. So, you know, I decided to put my pride aside, put my shame aside and just speak up and whoever listens will listen. And just inspire the ones that are fighting in silence and I'm really grateful that I did go on live. And you've had other people contact you in in relation to something similar that they went through? Yes, um, I was not actually expecting that. I felt that I was a person, I felt like I was, I was the only person that's been in that position. But um, you know, after I've gone live, these people are starting to come out and message me and share the stories of you know, the same people taking advantage of them. The, and the same two gents that... Yes, and when they did speak up, the community didn't believe them. And, um, the the, the Sudan accused, community? The Sudanese community did not believe them, they just accused them and blamed them, and um, just told them to keep quiet and move on. And it's not, it's, it's not okay to tell someone to keep quiet and move on, because they just got, their body was violated. They didn't ask for it, and these boys are walking freely because nobody's standing up or um, taking justice into the laws of the court. The community is just the two ashamed to be tarnished in a bad image. But allowing these to happen, it, it is not benefiting us because so